The world's insatiable hunger for space to store data is ever increasing in huge proportion. The data we generate and consume today is humongous. Scientists predict the world's data will grow to 175 zettabytes in 2025. Wait, what's a zettabyte? To make sense of this, let's take a look at where we are coming from. Do you remember those alien-looking pieces of technology? A type of disk storage composed of a thin and flexible disk of magnetic storage. At the time, it had a maximum storage capacity of 800 kilobytes to 1.5 megabytes, and it was the world's largest storage system. Well, that's what we thought. As technology continued to improve around year 2000s, we had laptops with storage capacity of 40 times more than a diskette. That sounds like a lot. Fast forward to nowadays, even the most basic smartphone comes with around 100 gigabyte of data storage, while a top-of-the-range iPhone or a Samsung has more than 500 gigabytes. But guess what, my friends? The days of being impressed by gigabytes are long gone. As the amount of data in the world has increased exponentially, we've had to come up with fancy, unfamiliar words to describe data in numerical form. So long, gigabytes. These days, we're talking terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, and zettabytes. Wait, what? I got lost at petabytes. Let's break it down. A terabyte is just over 1,000 gigabytes and is the most popular with our everyday computers. Scaling up from there, a petabyte is just over 1,000 terabytes. That's a whooping 1 million gigabytes. That may be far beyond the kind of data storage the average person needs, but the industry has been dealing with data in these sorts of quantities for quite some time. Way back in 2008, Google was said to process around 20 petabytes of data a day. That is 20 million gigabytes a day. To put that in context, if you took all of the information, including books, research papers, records, transcripts, and all other data forms from all of U.S. academic research libraries right from the beginning of time and lumped it all together, it would add up to merely two petabytes, and Google processed 10 times more than that in a single day. Hmm. Let's continue. Scaling up the data stacks, you have exabytes, which are roughly 1,000 petabytes and amount to 1 billion gigabytes. Then you have zettabytes, which is a little over 1,000 exabytes. That's a whopping 1 trillion gigabytes of data capacity. At this stage, it becomes hard to comprehend what any of this means in real terms. Now, let's try this. According to a Cisco estimate, the world's collective internet usage reached 1 zettabyte in 2016. That's a lot of TikToking and YouTubing. So, as the world's data has grown, we're now talking about data in terms of zettabytes. So, how many zettabytes have been created so far? According to market intelligence company IDC, the global data sphere in 2018 reached 18 zettabytes. Although not all the data is being stored, this is the total of all data created, captured, or replicated. 2018 down the line, the vast majority of data created in the last five years is way more than the last five decades, as the International Data Corporation predicts that the world's data will grow to 175 zettabytes before 2025. Let's dwell on that for a second. 175 zettabytes, what does that even look like? According to IDC's Data Age Report, which was released in 2018, the world would have grown to around 175 zettabytes by 2025. Let's paint a visual explanation of what all these mean. First, one zettabyte is equivalent to a trillion gigabytes. And if you were able to store the entire global data sphere on DVDs, then you would have a stack of DVDs that could get you to the moon 23 times or circle Earth 222 times. The report also went on to say, if you could download the entire 2025 global data sphere at an average of 25 megabytes per second, which is today's average data connection speed across the United States, then it would take one person 1.8 billion years to do it. Or if every person in the world could help and never rest, then you could get it done in 81 days. But where is all this data coming from? As an example, let's look at social media usage in 2023 in just a minute. Currently, 4.9 billion people, which is almost 60% of the world's population, use social media on average daily usage of 2 hours and 24 minutes. As of today, Twitter users sent over 500 million tweets per day. 
According to Snapchat, an average of 5 billion plus snaps are created every day. At least 95 million photos and videos are posted on Instagram each day. 2 million posts, articles, and videos are published on LinkedIn every day. There are 6 million IT decision makers on LinkedIn. There have been 11 billion endorsements on LinkedIn alone. In short, all of the world's data is the result of our increasingly digitized way of life. The connectivity of modern smart devices, not just smartphones, but smart TVs, smart thermostats, and so on, also plays a huge role. These devices are constantly gathering and transmitting data. To even think that this is mind-blowing enough, then you get the mother loads. Google, which processes more than 99,000 searches every second, that's about 8.5 billion searches a day. The over 2 billion users logging into Facebook every day is a testament to the two-thirds of the world's population who now owns a mobile smartphone. When you look at stats like these, it's not hard to see how the world's data has exploded in recent years and will continue to grow at an incredible rate. Whether we'll hit that vast number of 175 zettabytes in 2025 remains to be seen. But one thing's for sure, we'll be generating a heck of a lot more data than we already are. Although we've been impressive at creating, compressing, and storing information, our achievements are quite primitive compared to Mother Nature's methods. Humanity's total storage capacity amounts to less than 1% of the information that's stored in a person's DNA. Compared to nature, we are but humble apprentices, Hilbert said. However, while the natural world is mind-boggling in its size, it remains fairly constant. In contrast, the world's technological information processing capacities are growing at exponential rates, hence the need for massive data centers that power billions of endpoints around the world. Thank you for watching this episode. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share our videos as we keep bringing you intriguing topics in the world of technology. See you next week.